Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome CEO, Brand Leadership Group, Terbe Egalifang. Good morning. I'm so glad everybody is awake so early. I thought I'm the only one awake this morning. I have on the panel with me uh, uh, this morning Michelle Harrison, who's the CEO of, uh, CEO of Government and Public Sector Practice from the WPP. Welcome. I have on the panel Adiat um, Adisu from um, Adire Pire, a PRN Communication. Welcome. Thank you. And I've got my Nigerian brother, Jacob Wood. Uh, from the uh, Golden Gate, <laughs> welcome. We're talking about an important and very exciting uh, uh, topic this morning, how to transform the African brand. Uh, that is always, um, uh, that which, which uh, uh, the beauty of is that this is the central theme of, of, of the conference uh, 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 indeed uh, uh, today. But I want to start with the very first question. I want to put it up to my, uh, to my sister, uh, uh, Adiat. Uh, Adiat, you know, you're from, uh, you, Ghanaian, Nigerian, yes, based in New York. Yes. So you're a global African. Yes. And you're in the and, and you you've got you've got an interesting initiative. You've got the the Africa Fashion Week. What strikes me about that Africa Fashion Week is the biggest brand that uh, that Africans, particularly in the West Africa, tend to uh, to wrap themselves and to express themselves is Flisco. Now Flisco, from what I understand, is from Holland has been around Africa for 200. How come Africans uh, today have not been able to, to express themselves in their own identity? Hmm. The struggle for many brands, emerging African brands, whether it be in textile, um, whatever it is, across sectors, is the ability to establish its credibility among its peers and the ability for its peers to acknowledge them as credible. And it's a sociological issue that needs to be dealt with, but one of the things that I can say for emerging African brands, uh, those competing against the Veliscos or any brand in any sector, is that one of the key things to any brand is the story. And then it's the positioning of its story globally, competing with other brands that are established. So being able to be not comparative, but of better quality than those brands that have been established. So when you're thinking about the African brand, the indigenous African brand, it's essential for that brand to understand the power of its story, but the power of quality. And then it all goes back down to VCs, uh, venture capitalism, capitalists. Uh, one of the struggles that many African brands face is the ability to seek that investment. I don't think it's about not knowing what needs to be done in terms of positioning. It's having the resources to position itself. Thank you so much. I think I, I, I want to explore that later. Uh, but I also want to uh, introduce joining us on the panel at this moment is the Honorable uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs from, uh, from Uganda, from, from Luis Mush Mushikwabo from Rwanda. <laughs> Honourable Minister, welcome. Thank you. I think I think it's important that as you settle down, I asked you know uh, throughout this week uh, we had two uh, very inspirational uh, uh, prime ministers, uh, uh, presidents from from Gabon and from uh, from Rwanda. Your Honourable uh, uh, Paul uh, 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 Paul Kagame. And one of the things that he said uh, is that as Africans we need to work together because individually we are not going to be able to, uh, to, to succeed. But how are you going to be able to do that when if you think about the African, uh, uh, that Africa's 54 uh, are countries all, uh, all, all with their own jurisdictions and all those, how are we going to be able to control, if you will, the stories from the other African countries? Thank you. Um, I really think we have no choice. Um, one, if, if we look at the uh, brand of Africa and the descriptives of Africa, they come in a package. Nobody really goes through the 54 countries and picks all these good things each one of us has. It all comes in a big package Africa is um, in the minds of so many um, a, 
continent of opportunity, but a continent that is highly problematic. So on our side, we have got to bundle up, get together, and start demystifying that. So for me, it's not a question of how we do it. It's a question of how soon do how we do soon? it. Uh I want, to, I want to follow up on that question before going to the other panelists. Uh, now, Rwanda has had an amazing transformation uh, in the last 20 years. And my one fascination is when I asked one gentleman uh, at the Serena Hotel, I said, are you a Hutu or a Tutsi? And he said to me, I'm Rwandese. How are we going to... What lesson can we, or what insight can we learn from how Rwanda has been able to do that so that at one stage all Africans speak collectively? Uh, the, the example you gave is a, is a good opportunity for me to say one thing. Um, the, this tribal division in my country came from Belgium. The colonizer arrived in Rwanda and decided to divide our society in terms of tribal belonging. Our differences were based on socio-economic standing. So what has happened through our history is that that division, which was not a division in the beginning, but just differences in our society, um, ended up hurting our country. So we decided 20 years ago, after the genocide, that we were not, as a nation, going to allow ourselves to be divided and defined by somebody else. Yet, when you read anything to this day on Rwanda, um, when people talk to us, just as you said, are you Hutu, are you Tutsi? And if you say I'm Rwandese, they look at you suspiciously. It's like, you cannot define yourself. We want to define you. So as a nation, we have taken our unity very seriously. And yet we find that non-Rwandans, especially those who are behind uh, many, many years ago, this division, which was in the end uh, almost uh, a killer of our country, they still want to take us back. So. Even in terms of uh, branding, uh, if you look at it uh, uh, at the level of, uh, of the country rather than the continent, yeah. we must got to say who we are, what we want, how we get where we want to go, even with the many, many difficulties. So we, so we have to take, uh, we have to take control of the story ourselves and the identity in terms of how we want to position ourselves. We must tell our story we must work aggressively to do that, and we should not be thinking that it's going to be easy, but that's where we should begin. We do not mind other people telling our stories, but by and large, we're absent in our own story as Africans. Jacob, um, I'm fascinated. You are Chinese. Now, in, 19, in 1990, I think China had one billion invested in Africa. And I think by 2012 or 2013, they're up to 200 billion. They are in 53 of the 54 African countries. And when I spoke with you uh, offline, you said to me, I'm, I'm Nigerian. What lesson do we take from the Chinese in terms of uh, how they've been able to be part of the African story? That's the one side. But the other side, um, uh, the other side of, this, of the question I want to know is, how do we avoid as Africans being, China, uh, being turned into Chinese in Africa? Uh, I look like Chinese, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm Nigerian. Anyway, I've been in <laughs> Nigeria almost 40 years. But you know, we say that, that China invests in Africa, of course, yes. But why I say that, number one, I'm a very uh, quite agree with Madame say that we have to talk our own story. What Africa? Uh, our people know that Nigeria, people, maybe I've been in the paper here, huh? bring my girls back, right? Although, we're in province, yes. But we have to tell you that 200 girls in the, I can see the picture, right? The classroom not decent. 
the table is not so good. What are they doing there? The 200 girls went over there to take a exam. Exam. They want to education. But only the way the solution for the developed Africa yeah. is education. It's education. So we say we have to talk our own stories. But don't say, ah, Africa is dangerous, terrorism. No, 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 no. So we shouldn't be afraid as Africans oh, no, that, no, um, no, no. that China, and I'm not asking you because you, I'm asking because you've got an insight into China and you've got an experience into Africa. So we shouldn't be afraid. Because, uh, you know, are you saying yes no, or no, but not? be afraid because I used to be the advisor to Abbasanjo for MSE. What mean by MSE? The small middle enterprises. I told my baba, Oga, Abbasanjo. Oh, okay. He gonna... said, you stand up in the, in the table or in the stage. Tell your Chinese pe people, you are look handsome, you look health, you look very well. Africa is safe the place for a guy to come in. That oh, is, is my job, and which is do very well. You remember 19, uh, year 2008, I know the first learner, a gentleman from Jamaica. Yeah. What they eat? They eat a yam. What mean by yam? It's African food. Because he eat yam, they are them fast. This is our food. I'm glad you talk. Our, our African brand. I'm glad you talk about food. You talk about African brand, and I want to switch to Michelle. Uh, Michelle, you know, if you look at the uh, the brand finance, uh, brand Africa 100 list of the most valuable brands, 63 percent of them are, are non-African brands, and 33 percent or the balance are African brands. But of that balance, it is. 72% South Africa, 26% Nigeria, and 2% uh, only, uh, only Kenya. And among the 100 most valuable brands from your WPP brand Z100, uh, there's only one African brand, MTN. What are African brands not doing, or what should they be doing uh, to, uh, to, to, be, to be heard globally? Or the second question I perhaps would link to that is, should we even bother trying to go global, or should we just try to be African, because you know, being in Gabon for the last uh, uh, couple of days, I've only been eating, drinking, sleeping French. <laughs> uh, well, can I start by thanking uh, the conference for having WPP here? Obviously, and we're very, very pleased to be forming an alliance and uh, investing um, in ATIAS Associates. So, I think the starting point on Brand Z, which is a tool that is used um, around the world to understand the commercial strength of brands. The starting point there is, in many ways, what Brand Z does is it tracks the history of branding because brands take a long time to build and that story has to be sustained and they require long-term commitment. So what Brand Z is capturing is the position now and that reflects the last 20 or 30 years of all of the work and investment that's been done globally in commercial brands. So the fact that there is now an entrant from an African brand is the start of a new journey. Now, I think one of the things that we've recognized around the world, especially if we look at Asia and the work that we do on branding actually in China, what we're seeing is so much more work is being done on local brands growing and starting to export globally. So um, that seems to me that when we look ahead, the opportunities are very significant. However, brands and their nurturing and development require many different things. They require a vision, and as we've talked about, they require a story and then a huge amount of work to get them to reach their audience. So the future for African band, brands will be dependent on the extent to which they can be managed and invested in to reach that audience. Adyad, are we investing in that African story? How are, you, how are you finding from outside, and you come back now to Nigeria, and how are you finding this African story? Is it beginning to resonate? Um, are we loving Africa? Are we loving Made in Africa? Oh, yes. You know that Africa, we have our... Jacob, are you Michelle? Are you, are you Adyad? Me? Are you Adiyat? He's Nigerian, remember? <laughs> you know Nigerians, uh, want to take over so, the show. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me, let me, I'll, I'll come back to you. I'm in China. <laughs> so... I'll, I'll come back to you. I'll, I'll, I want to get it from um, Adiyat. Our ability to acquire investing and attract investing will be, based on what my sister here said, will be 
based primarily on our sustainability of our story. It takes time to develop a brand. Any great brand has taken years. Africa and its emergence of brands, it's fairly new. And it's, one thing I will say, the generalization and the globalization of the concept of Africa is sexy, but each country, as my fellow sister has also stated, has a responsibility to identify itself, its core competencies, and the brands that, that are coming from each country. So when you look at Nigeria, what are those brands in beauty? What are those brands in fashion? What are those brands in design, decor, et cetera? So we as individuals need to take pride in our, where we're from and our ability to create brands specifically where we're from, but also understand that it contributes to the whole story of Africa, which will attract investment over time. So there's an, there's an individual responsibility as well. Minister, uh, in terms of how have you been able to get the individuals in Rwanda, and take it from micro and then macro, what will it take to mobilize African citizens to be able to tell this unified and attractive story of Africa? I think the first step is to understand how important it is in this world today to be relevant. Um, I, I came to politics from the world of public relations, and I know for a fact that even the Red Cross, you know, has to have brand carriers. Um, the most benign, innocent enterprise, charities want to be relevant. Um, for Africa, it's very important, and I'll get to Rwanda in a second, that we understand that if we continue to be defined by um, a slew of experts, most of them from outside the continent. We are hurting um, our investment, we are hurting our tourism, and we continue to subtly contribute to the marginalization of Africa. So very first thing is we must realize that Africa needs to be present, and Africa is no paradise, but Africa is, is a continent that needs to be out there. It's, it's the most important thing. Second, um, as, as a nation, I don't think, um, first of all, Rwanda has done very well, but Rwanda has a long way to go. So, mm -hmm. I mean, um, we came from very far, but we, we still look at ahead, uh, and, and we're a country of very young people um, with, with great ambition. And, and I think what Michelle said, which is very important, it is hard work. But I don't believe we need to um, fall over ourselves trying to create an image, or, or um, it's, it's who we are in reality that is going to define us. It's, it's like, for, for those of us in this room who know something about makeup, you can't apply makeup on a face that is not clean. So it's really who we are, um, but not staying back and being driven by others. It's who we are, but out there. I want to ask Jacob, uh, because Jacob, you published the first West African Unity magazine that goes out to China, Africa. Uh, do you, just picking up from what the minister has said there, um, have you found that the reason China has grown so importantly in Africa is because they are understanding Africa better because of the message that's going into China about Africa? Okay, I don't you know, know if I'm leading the question. Yeah, the, you know, uh, the Prime Minister of China just visited Africa, right? But he had kept a very important three points. Any investment from China to Africa, yeah. number one should be Africa need. Number two should be Africa agreed. Number three, which is important, should be Africa contribution and participate. I love that. I love that. Africa need agreed uh, a contrib uh, contribution. Yeah. Which Africa uh, contribution and participation. And African participation. Yes. Uh, Michelle, when it comes to African participation, because now you, you had a public sector, uh, and 
across Africa, I think Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria, Botswana have got what you call brand country or country brand. Is it important to have those institutions and what is their role and what, uh, and what do they need to do to be successful? Well, I think, I think the starting point is, and just re you know, referring to some of the earlier, co earlier comment, we, it, first of all, it's defining an authentic promise that you want to, that you know is authentic, that yeah. you know is real, and that you want to make sure people here to define your own story. Yeah. I think the role of um, non-profit or governmental bodies is often an organizing role, and it's the ability to bring together different stakeholders to work together on what is then a long-term plan. I think where we, uh, where we generally see the best results, though, the commercial sector is absolutely at the core because country branding is about a series of different touch points that people will have with a, with a country, whether it's as a tourist or as a business person, whether they're visiting, whether they're just reading about it. And it has to be an authentic experience so that when they do have that experience, it matches the promise that the brand has said. So I think you need the commercial sector right in at the heart of it. But if it doesn't feel true, to the people of that country themselves, it will fail. And if you want to look at an example of that, it's Britain and European Union right now, but um, which tonight we will, we will get the results of that outcome of the elections. But, but the idea that it's authentic and that it's owned by the people themselves is key. Authentic and owned by the people, so it's a perfect time to ask the people in the audience uh, are, are some key co questions they may have for the panel. There's a hand right at the back. Please identify yourself. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Alex Vines from Chatham House, the Royal Institute of International Affairs in London. And it is about the country ban. My question is, how important is anti-corruption and human rights for transporting the African brand? Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna note the questions. I'm gonna take just three, two, three questions. Next question. Okay, merci. Je suis Hans Charlie, étudiant à l'université Omar. Thank you. I'm Hans Charlie, a student at Omar Mongo University. I don't have a question, but just a kind of answer on the transformation and African brand. And I, I do not uh, believe, and I do not agree with you, and when they say that it takes so much time to transform African uh, brand, you can do it in freedom. How? Why? The African brand must be produced in Africa, and uh, the investment should take place in Africa and African continent, and we should develop an African market. And on that African market, how to develop it? We've got to incorporate within African uh, uh, things. We've got to introduce a specificity of the uh, uh, African culture, African people. And uh, why? Because I want the Rwandan uh, people, when they, they create our African brand, there should be the uh, specificity of Gabonese uh, uh, culture and the uh, governor's entrepreneur they should uh, integrate in this African brand the specificity around the culture and this will bring a kind of African cohesion where everybody will be integrated within this so thank you merci uh, and that African brand must be produced in Africa um, next question last question right at the back there uh, good morning, everyone. This is Ms. Sanyera. I'm a student in the Master's II program finance at the uh, Business Institute in Libreville. I wanted to make a comment uh, on the different historical facts. Uh, I'd like to take the example of Gabon because it's my country. In the different teaching uh, supports, uh, sometimes we forget to talk about our own history, and we prefer to teach our children the history of France, the French Revolution, and so on. And uh, very often, we forget our own history. And so I think that it would be very important to integrate into our pedagogical supports and uh, the different important facts concerning our own history before talking about the history of other countries. Thank you. I think I want to wrap it up with those three questions. You know, um, very interesting questions, because, you know, the subject of Africa, uh, whenever you talk about Africa, brand Africa, the subject of corruption uh, always uh, comes to the fore. 
and um, I'm not saying that it's a, it's, a, it's a government responsibility, but I'd like perhaps to get a comment from, uh, from, uh, from the minister in terms of um, how important is it uh, to manage that part of the brand uh, with respect to uh, perception of corruption, perception of lack of respect for human rights, uh, which I think is the essence of the gentleman's question. Um, I'm trying not to be very controversial, but um, um, corruption is a reality on the continent, but corruption is not African. Um, <laughs> corruption does not exist in Africa alone. At different levels, governments, um, businesses and, and society in general. And, and I'm really glad to, to have that question because this whole idea that it's almost as if in Africa we're either victims or, or brutes. You know, there are many, many normal people in Africa. And there are many, many good leaders in Africa. So what, what, what we need to do on our side is, is to highlight some of the um, practices uh, against corruption. It's also important, I think, on the other side, the non-African side, to realize that this intangible notion of human rights is not the preserve of the West. We all aspire to the same things. We want justice, we want to have our say in the way we are governed, and there could be difficulties. I'm not done playing that. But, but I think that's where the whole brand thing becomes tricky. I'm, I'm a foreign minister, so I cannot cite examples of, of countries, but I can line up for you a number of countries, government officials, not from Africa, who are very heavily involved in corruption, who abuse human rights. So, so, so while, while we need to do some work, no question about it, no question about it, we have to do some work on, on the side of the continent. But I think it doesn't serve anybody to keep pushing certain dirty words on the African continent. It's not right. It's not right. Where we have to do some work, where we have to do some work, we must do some work. But uh, there is a selective process where some countries and some places that bear interest or are friends with some Western quarters are deliberately ignored. Or even some of the abuses of rights and corruption in the West are also kept quiet. While whatever is happening in Africa, and I'm not denying it, is, is propped up and highlighted to make the continent look so abnormal. So it's, so, a, res so it's a responsibility again of us as Africans to take hold of that story. No question about it. Nobody should be expected on this continent to have somebody else work for us. It's our responsibility. Thank you so much, uh, um, uh, Minister. Which brings me to Adia. This, this idea and the story of the history of Africa, because that's quite interesting, because uh, I mean, I must say, um, it's my first time in Gabon. I did struggle a little bit looking for Gabonese in Gabon. Uh, and uh, and the, the, the young lady from, um, uh, from Gabon there says, uh, the schools, uh, uh, Francophone, sc uh, fr Franco -Africans, uh, uh, Francophone African schools are teaching more the history of, Fra of France, uh, which, which I guess in many ways subdues the African identity. And is that the reason that we are finding such difficulty in expressing ourselves through products, goods, and services made in our countries? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think one of the most important things that every brand should understand, and I look at each country as a brand, um, and those that manage that brand, each agency, each institution, um, is to understand that Every individual is a brand ambassador. And every great brand needs a brand ambassador. And you can't have a brand ambassador with a lack of information about the brand. 
So we need to uh, give information about who we are, where we come from, and where we and where we headed. Uh, Jakob, and how are you helping us as uh, Africans, uh, as a as a Chinese Nigerian? Uh, how are you helping us to ensure that the Golden Gate does not express all of China, but express um, a made in Africa identity? Because you've got a brand, Golden Gate. You're in three countries. And uh, how African are those brands? You know, Af Golden Gate. And how did you get that? Did you, how did you involve Africans to ensure that it is a made in Africa product? Because Golden Gate is African brand, not Chinese brand. So, you know, because in the, in the important thing that like, everybody understand, understand Africa, we are very rich culture. Even I will talk about the food. The, let's say the, I, everyone knows the Noleu. If you, you travel from Dubai to China, you can see the, Af the Nigeria film. That's our African brand. That's, that, an, Af yeah. that's an African brand. Michelle, just in, in closing with the last question, uh, 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 perhaps to you. Uh, with your worldwide experience in this uh, practice of country branding and nation branding, what lessons uh, should we have, uh, should we take in helping to build the African brand? I think, uh, I guess my final point would be that brands, whatever kind of brand, whether it's a product, a service, or a country, they do have to encapsulate authentic history, but they are also very much about saying what's next and about telling the story of the future. So New Africa, the brand that is being built by Africans, by African governments and by African businesses and by African commercial brands, is there for that story to be told and projected for the future. So of course it's about replacing some of the stories from the past that that Africans may not feel are the ones they want to take with them into the future, but it, it has to be authentic and it has to have a vision of what's next. So in transforming the African brand, there's going to be a need for clarity. There's going to be a need for collaboration. There's going to be a need for consistency. But most importantly, as Africans, we have to tell our story. Minister, Jacob, Adiad, Michelle, it's been brilliant.